Supernorth.com. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of know some people um, out here, you know, a couple of friends. Uh, so I've kind of asked, you know, good food spots and, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge seafood guy. And so I've heard the seafood is really good up here. So, um, so that I've asked that, um, you know, about the barbershop, I, I've, I've looked at certain guys, so still trying to find a barber. So I got a haircut before I left. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm gonna need one, um, you know, since I'm gonna be out here for, for the rest of my career. So, uh, so I'm definitely gonna need a barber. <laughs> I, I love that little line. I love that little line for the rest. <laughs> yeah. Since I'm taking over for Kirk next year, he says, wait, what? That was Kellen Mond, by the way. He uh, and by the way, he did end up at Ocean Air last night, according to his Twitter, his Instagram feed. So, so he Declan, put out a little filler. De Declan's been taking credit for essentially the chain of events that led Kellen Mond to Ocean Air. I am taking credit for this. I'm okay. one hundred percent. Now, okay, Courtney Cron that, that press conference happened Friday. Courtney Cronin put out a tweet, and some others put out a tweet to, "Hey, love seafood. Uh, you love seafood. Love seafood." So I put out a graphic yesterday. With Courtney's screenshot of the tweet talking about his love of seafood, he's looking so you brought for you brought it back to life, like like brought it back three to life. days three days later, like you're bringing this back to yep. life. Lo and behold, I throw it on our Facebook and Twitter and Instagram feed, and the engagement rate naturally is just through the roof. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, Kellen Mond tweets out at like six o'clock last night, "Hey, I'm still looking for seafood recommendations," and he's Ooh. liking and all liking and, and and replying back to some of the fans that are saying, "Hey, try this place, go to this place, go to that place." And then by 8 p.m., where is Kellen Mond? He's in a He's downtown local there. Minneapolis es establishment eating seafood. We just speak things into existence on this show. So, Kellen Mond, wow. if you want to come on and talk seafood and, and also and maybe some seltzers, too, let me know. Let we me are know. the straw that just stirs the drink. We just The best part the about drink. that entire thing is I'm convinced because Courtney's, uh, the quote that she used on Twitter was that he had been told that there's great seafood here. Somebody punked him. Well, there's great walleye here. There's great lake right, but like, seafood here, but you're not going to find like, like you're not pulling shrimp right. out of you know exactly the bayou. Here. But I'm yeah. sure, but I'm sure he's talking about what what we consider to be real seafood, right? So somebody punked him and said, "Oh, Minnesota's got great seafood." He's like, "I can't wait." Minnesota has De great, and then food. Declan's trying to help him. Oh, it's got fantastic food, but I'm just yeah. saying, it's not it, the seafood here is obviously not fresh. It's it's well, brought so, in. Well, some of it is. The walleye's fresh. I'm saying the really good stuff. The cod yeah. is fresh. Yeah, okay. Let's talk about the stuff that you get in <laughs> Seattle, that, you know, towards there, towards the yeah. coast. Yeah, I, the restaurants out here, they literally just, like, you order, and then the and then your server turns around, rolls up and his kill, or her sleeve, roll, exactly, like, reaches exactly. into the water. You make eye contact with yeah. your dinner, and then they Exactly cook. right. <laughs> so that's, that's the difference. So, but I think he got punked, and then Declan tried to help him out. I did. And maybe did. Maybe did. I love it. Maybe I recommend did. it. I said, listen... I retweeted his request for seafood, and I said, there is a Long John Silver's at the Mall of America that will change your life in that food court, okay? You can get the $4 combo, a little, little shrimp, a little... I tweeted, little... I tweeted the same thing Friday. Long LJS. Oh, you I did? Lo oh, I... I loved LJS. I... I used to love it so bad for you, yet so good. And I don't think that... Now, is the mall one there still? Uh, I th it was as of like a year ago. Okay, because there was never mean, no. an... I don't know. I, I was just saying, I don't know. I've been to a mall. Okay, in, because in we did not have months. an individual franchise here ever. They they had them in, in Iowa because when, when I'd go to, uh, to Don's hometown, Cedar Rapids, they had an LJS there, and I loved it. The dipping sauces is great. Well, I mean... Like, la la last point on seafood before we could do another 30-minute pot on this because we totally could because I love seafood. Fast food seafood... Avoid, avoid like the plague. What? Avoid it. Fish, like 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 fish sandwiches and that kind. Avoid it. Avoid it, dude. I'm out on you, sports son. I'm out. I'm, no, unless I'm, Long John Silver wants to wants to present uh, Purple Daily. Purple Daily presented by Long John. So we'll get Declan to wear a pirate hat. Yeah. The McDonald's some, fish sandwich is delicious. <laughs> it is. I won't say anymore. Fish. Give me back anymore. my filet of fish. Yeah, Give anymore. me that fish. Fish. <laughs> Give me back the filet of fish. I love that sandwich. Okay. Well, for those of you that are still listening, this is Purple Daily presented by TCL. Enjoy more of what you love with TCL. Mackie Judd, executive producer Declan. And uh, there's more clips where that came from. This is Kellen Mond. Let's, uh, well, we got a couple more to play for you here. Let's start with the, uh, the Kirk. Are both of these Kirk or is, is it just the first one 
You go ahead and play whatever you want. But we want to okay, talk so about ke- things Kellen Mond can learn from Kirk Cousins. So this is if he's um, if he's talked to Kirk Cousins. Um, he he contacted me uh, after I got drafted, and uh, we talked. Um, you know, he I don't know if he's out here yet. I haven't seen him out here, but um, you know, coming coming up next week, I'm, I'm assuming he'll be out here. So. Uh, you know, I've obviously watched all his film, like I've said, but, um, you know, I think it would be um, also really good just to be able to see him in person, um, just be able to communicate and just, you know, him almost just being a, a, a mentor, essentially, and just being able to learn from him. That's interesting um, that Kirk called him, which is good. OK, so I love that the Vikings communicated this before the pick to Kirk. Kirk picks up the phone. Let's just get rid of any tension here. This is not a thing for 2021, probably. So I I like that there's no tension to start with. But he mentioned at the end of the clip, you know, things that he can learn from Kirk. So let's start with Judd. What are things that Kellen Mond should go to school on with Kirk? And what are things that maybe he should go to school on what not to learn from Kirk? I don't know. So I I think that Kellen Mond's approach there was genius because basically he didn't come in and say, I, I love how he said the rest of my career. But nothing he said was threatening. Like there was no underlying, or it, it was underlying. It wasn't over the top. Things he can learn from Kirk. I'm sure there are some things. Yeah. I don't really know because, like, I guess you learn. Like, I think, I think that year, the ideal for a young uh, QB in year one is to probably watch and observe everything. So it's Kirk. It's um, how. Things function as far as meetings go. It's the professional aspect it takes. I mean, heck, on on, um, on game days, you, you can watch the opposing QB from the field and learn a ton. I don't know that his st- his style translates to Kirk, and he implied that it sort of does. Like, I, I can learn footwork from Kirk, but I think that's just genius because he basically is disarming Kirk, and Kirk will be disarmed. Like, Kirk will be like, oh, he's learning a lot from me, and he can learn maybe 5% or something like that. Uh, what well, can five percent? What can ten percent? Like, like their styles aren't going to translate. Their styles aren't really going well, to it's translate. Not like their mechanics and stuff, like you know, might not. But they're no. Well, but I know. But the op- things he can learn. But the offense is going to have to to have morph eventually to what Mon does well. And I don't know that what Mon does well. It's I mean, Kirk is ideally Kirk is a drop back in the pocket passer who would who would have been an awesome player in 1996. So. But what I think Kellen Mond can learn probably is a lot of stuff off the field, and that's just from the whole observational thing. It's why I think it's ideal if a guy doesn't have to play because he doesn't have to concern himself then with the immediacy of, oh, my God, I'm playing on Sunday, right? He's got the ability to take a step back and learn. What can he learn from Kirk that are things not to do? Again, I don't think their styles are going to be similar enough where where he's going to be replacing Kirk. I mean, he can run. He can do things that Kirk can't do. So I just think it's really an off-the-field gamut of things that Mond will have the ability, hopefully, to sit back and observe. Dex, let's play the next clip here. This is, I believe, Kellen Mond talking about things that he has learned so far. Not from Kirk, but just like things he's learned early on. Um, you know, I've watched a ton of a ton of film on just, you know, what Kirk uh, did this past year and um, with, you know, a whole bunch of different plays and stuff like that. So um, that's re- pretty much all I'm focused on. So just being able to have, you know, Nate and uh, Jake out there with me, um, you know, tremendously helps me. And um, just being able to kind of sit behind them and just being able to watch them every rep and um, also take reps with them. Um, I think that's a, a huge advantage for me. So. Um, yes, it is, you know, a lot thrown at my plate. I feel like I've done a really good job with the information that is given. Um, but, you know, there's still a lot more a lot more room to grow. Hopefully the Vikings have some people on the coaching staff here. And, you know, Clint Kubiak is going to have to be the number one guy that's, that's able to, in a tactful way, pull Kellen Mond aside and say, all right, buddy, listen. So here are the things that you need to go to school and study Kirk on, all right? And I'll get to a list in my mind that I, that I think aligns. But here's where you're different, and here are the things that he doesn't do particularly well that you know, we're working on, and, we're, and we communicate this with him too, but that you need to go to school on those too. The, things that I, the, the first thing that stands out is I love that he's already watched all 16. He said he watched all 16 games of the Vikings already, like in the last week or two. Uh, and so he's gone to school on that film, and he's coming in here. He seems to have... He seems to have sort of a wide-eyed and bright personality, 
and he's obviously very good with the media so far. So all, all these things, that I, like, what am I looking for in a franchise quarterback? I want someone who is studious, obsessed with film, that's charismatic, and and is great with the media. Because like, when's the last time you saw a star quarterback that wins Super Bowls? That's like Jay Cutler, you know? You, right. You've got there's got to be a certain charismatic quality to your personality and and great communication whether it's with your teammates your coaches or the media you just have to you have to be great in front of a camera i mean you're you're essentially the president or the ceo of the football team in that position so early on i like the signs of of you know just like the first week or so that kelamon is showing i think he can go to school on how to study film all right kirk man these nfl defenses are super complicated way more complicated than what i saw in college what do I need to look for on film specifically as I prepare for games? Because we can sit here and we can knock Kirk for uh, for not being mobile and for uh, and for waiting for perfect openings of you know, wide receivers, but Kirk is very meticulous with planning and studying. That's one thing that he, it, sometimes to a fault, right? Yeah. So I want Kellen yes. Mond to know like how to study film, how to go about your routine and your practice and everything behind the scenes. And I would say the other thing that people rave about Kirk is that he has flawless, perfect footwork, which for him to throw for the completion percentages he does and the yards and for him to, to put up the numbers that he does, well, he's not doing that by escaping the pocket and improvising his way to 4,000 yards in the air. He has to have great footwork as a pocket passer, like in terms of drop back and rhythm and things like that. Now, does he sometimes freak out when things go off script? Yes. So that's something I'd put in the other bin, but just in terms of what does your footwork need to look like? What does your prep need to look like? Those are things I absolutely want him to study Kirk on. The other list would include things like off script, right? Late in games, when the tension is high and the pressure is high, how are you communicating with your teammates? How are you calming your heart rate, right? Like things that you that you just have to sort of figure out uh, when you're thrown in the deep end. But I think I feel like Judd is over-exaggerating how, like, how few things can be learned from Kirk when you're coming in as a rookie and, and he's never experienced the NFL. I'm, I'm not high on Kirk as a guy who can win a Super Bowl, but there's a million things you can learn from one of the 15 best quarterbacks in the world if you're Kellen Mond. Mond strikes me as a guy, though, that watches film a lot, for, from if that comment is accurate. And so my guess is he's studied Kirk, he's studied Mahomes, Brady, which is really, really smart. Um I just don't know, with a guy like Kirk, I don't know, like, I guess you can study things to a point. I don't know how much there is to take away um, from Kirk in particular that you can't get from your coaches, that you can't get from different quarterbacks. I wrote a note down. So this is Mon's first time on Zoom here, and he's obviously a smart, articulate kid, okay? And I have no idea when the bleep hits the fan and there's adversity how he's going to react, if he's going to become more cantankerous. So this is not a defining statement by me. But I wrote down one word about what we just saw there that is very different from Kirk, and I think it's incredibly important. And the word is real. I, that, what we just saw there felt like Kellen Mond. Like, I don't know him, but you know what? I saw that, and I didn't think... He's trying to be somebody else, or he's trying to be what he thinks that that he should be and that I want. That sounded like a kid who is comfortable in his own skin, who is confident, uh, but not a jerk, who is who is brash enough to believe in himself, but doesn't come off the top rope to tell me I'm great. He just says things like the rest of, of my career. Uh, but the word I wrote down was real, and it's very important. And you know what? Call me call me a Kirk hater all you want, but I have never felt that I have ever seen Kirk Cousins speak, and I can use the word <laughs> real. It's why you I like have that? called him... You like that? It's why I've called this guy for a long time the corporate quarterback. It feels like he's playing the role of, of what Phil described, right? CEO. Like, this is this is how you sell it. Um, I've never heard Kirk at a podium or on a Zoom call uh, be what I would consider, in my own opinion, genuine. Kellen Mond, and I might be totally, I might be proven to be a thousand percent wrong, but just from that clip, that seemed like a genuine person. And and if you recall, that was the starting point for Teddy. Guys loved him. Why? Because flawed or not, and he was flawed, but flawed or not, he was Teddy. I, Actually, I think it's incredibly important to be yourself. I'm glad you brought up the Teddy thing because I because I think you could sit here and make a point that. 
Tom Brady is a different person at the podium than he is behind the scenes. And you could and and there's other examples too, right? So you can't just go off of like, well, what are they doing at a podium when they're talking to the media? I think you can glean some things from that, but I want to know: Do their teammates love and respect them? Because if you if 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 you don't love and respect your quarterback, he has to be good and he has to be able to make the throws and he has to be able to read defenses, but he also has to be able to have everyone's buy-in during moments of football crisis, right? And trust yes. and and in the game yes. planning, like there's you're essentially being looked at as the leader through choppy seas of a, of a now 17 game season. Yep. And you know, Teddy wasn't nearly and isn't, he's, I see he didn't die. He's still a quarterback in the NFL. Teddy isn't as talented as Kirk, especially after the injury. Neither one of them are all that mobile. Uh, Kirk has a much better arm. He's more accurate. He puts up better numbers uh, where Teddy trumps Kirk. And if you could put together, some of the things in Kirk's skill set with some of the things in Teddy's skill set, mm-hmm. Teddy's teammates will take a bullet for him. Like the way they talk about him is as if he's one of the best leaders they've ever been around and one of the best guys, right? They rally around him. Mm-hmm. And I think in football, that translates to better chemistry and maybe another win. Like I, it's hard to quantify fully. And that's the thing about Kirk. You don't hear, you don't hear teammates just raving unprovoked right you know you never you never hear a teammate say i just, I just want to say something real quick about kirk man that guy's a warrior and that Kyle guy's one of, the, one of the best leaders that i've ever been around right like yeah. people said that about teddy so you yes. wonder like why are people so obsessed with teddy i think it's more the idea of what teddy could have become just based on all the things behind the scenes right and he just he's just not talented enough after the injury now he's just he's not ever going to be that guy can kellen mond be that guy from a leadership standpoint and then can he fix the mechanical the rigid sort of mechanics that he brings in from college right so yeah go to school on that for sure i agree but i mean if you are genuine if you are who you are i think that that goes a long way in a locker room of establishing and you know what you might be a quiet guy you might not lead i don't know uh, but it just seemed it seems like Kirk had to walk into the locker room on day one of being, I think at that time, the highest paid QB in the league and say, this is my team. I'm in charge. And guys are like, no, you're not. Like, that's not how the, this works. Uh, but, Phil, you bring up a, a really interesting word because I've given this play some thought. Like, big picture, what did what did it mean? I want to go back to the, I believe it was the Bears game at U.S. Bank Stadium last year and the Justin Jefferson Kirk kerfuffle that, that was caught on the boom mic where there was a late throw to Jefferson and he clearly stands up and says throw the effing ball like mm-hmm. throw the effing yeah. ball okay yeah and and I think that goes back to a word that you broached and I actually right before you said it wrote it down myself trust trust just so Kirk needs conditions in his mind to be perfect not to screw up and if and if he sees something off he's not going to take that chance but being a receiver is really a difficult job because you have no control. Like, you can't go get the ball. The ball has to come to you. And I think that there's a trust there. I, I think what frustrated Jefferson was, he's like, damn, I'm really good. If you put the ball where it's supposed to be, and yes, it's going to have to, It might. it's almost going to be picked, okay? But if it's not, I'm going to catch it. And that's the level of trust that I th- I think he got mad because Kirk didn't trust himself and therefore Jefferson as well to make a throw that to win games in this yeah. league you have to make. That I remember the the pushback that we got when we talked about that. It was it was a lot of you guys are really this is just classic score north clickbait, <laughs> purple daily clickbait and you know c- call it clickbait whatever you want. I mean, we are we we give our opinions on this show and on Mackie and Judd and so we're not often looking for the right or most popular opinion you know we're we're giving what we think like i think that's one of the things we pride ourselves on this show we're not always right but we're gonna tell you what we think and my my visceral gut reaction when i saw that was wow like justin jefferson turned to kirk cousins a veteran established quarterback in this league and the presumed you know leader of that locker room right and absolutely reamed him in a moment of like football rage he turned around he jumped up and he dropped a 
a couple words that the boom mic picked up. You know, damn it, Kirk. I think I think it was throw the That's flag. That's what it was. He said throw the flag, which wasn't – people thought, oh, he's yelling at the official. No, he's looking back at the quarterback, and he's talking about a flag route. There was a there, – it was – there the, the initial route was a flag route, and then, and then and then like Kirk didn't throw the ball, and he rolled out to his left, and so Jefferson had to improvise, and it was too late. And so he's yelling at Kirk, throw the flag route with a couple mm-hmm. expletives. And my, my visual reaction was, whew, like – for you to yell at a guy like that who is 10 years your senior in the NFL, mm-hmm. the word I would use is is respect. Like, there's you don't have a ton of – it's not that you don't respect him at all, but, like, there's enough of a lack of respect to yell that at him in that moment. And I don't think you're going to see a rookie receiver yelling at Tom Brady or Russell Wilson or Rodgers. Like, have you ever seen Devontae Adams turn around at any point in the last four <laughs> years when Rodgers overthrows him or something? You know, damn it, Aaron! You know, right. throw the damn ball. Like, no, there's a – Exactly. Aaron's the man. Aaron knows what he's doing. That was a bad throw, but I'm going to yes. let that one slide, right? And it's not a knock on Jefferson. It's just a human dynamic thing to be observed, right? It's right. Not, it's not – So, But the whole know. game – the whole game itself is built on trust because you, you're going to make passes that are dangerous. Like, you just have to. That, that's how – this league operates on on – Largely, as much as Kirk and Mike might hate this, it operates on dangerous plays. It operates on leading the receiver on passes and yeah. trusting that the guy's going to run the correct route. And so, but my point being is, it's just a very interesting dynamic there because there is a reason why on the way out, Kyle didn't thank Kirk. Um, Stefan Diggs didn't like the offense. But, you know, to say Kirk played no role is probably not true there either. So it's just an interesting dynamic of of uh, Kirk certainly has the physical God-given gifts to be very, very good. But quarterback goes so much beyond that. And and if Mond is a kid that comes in and is trusted and is well-liked and, and can get the best from his teammates, that's a positive step. That's a very—and and this year will go a long way— even if he doesn't play a game, it's going to go a long way toward determining exactly that. Because by the end of this year in that locker room, everybody will know what this kid is about. And if they begin to trust him and like him, and I don't mean like best friend, like, but I mean like him as a football player, respect him. He's not playing a role. He's not trying to be a, a QB in the National Football League on a show that's that's on ABC. He's actually, tr- you know, if all of those things happen that's a really productive first year to at least set yourself up yeah so uh yeah i we'll we'll monitor this and see the vikings are we don't i guess it remains to be seen what the attendance is going to be at some of these off-season workouts too um i think it's right going to be pretty just, good yeah i think teams are showing are up vaccinated and, and yeah not so yeah i think it's going to be pretty good uh boys we also have here oh uh, yeah football Yes. From NFL.com, Cynthia Freeland, who is the NFL Network analytics expert, has run all of the teams through her boop, doop, 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 computer projection system. <laughs> I don't know what it looks like, but she has win projections for each team in the NFL, presented by our friends at Federated. Federated Mutual Insurance Company providing insurance, risk management tools, and peace of mind for business owners for over 100 years. They're based in Owatonna. They are one of us, so to speak, in the state of Minnesota. And you can find out if your industry matches the list that they protect. It's a vast list of areas that they will protect on uh, federatedinsurance.com. And remember, at Federated, it's our business to protect yours. All right. Who do you think? Have you guys looked at this list yet? I did. So, okay. So, Dex, I can't quiz yep. God. Yep. So, oh, you've looked at this too? Oh, you've looked too? Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, you guys are no fun. We're buzzkills. All right. Well, Social I'll ask the audience. have to go out. You know, there's a whole thing. Declan does a lot. Um, okay. <laughs> audience, who do you think has the number one projected win total? I'll give you five seconds. Think about it. How many wins is it? Bum, bum, bum. If you said the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 12.2 average wins throughout the simulations that they did, you would be correct. She's got the Buccaneers as the top team in the NFL. Your guys' thoughts? Everybody's back. I told you this last week. That concerns me. Yeah. Um, I think they'll make the playoffs at this point. I really do. 
I do not think that they will be the best team. Sorry. It just the this league doesn't usually work like that now. I'm going to think it's ahead, safe. You know, it's safe to assume they should be the best team. But like is Judd it? said, no, I think it is. It's is safe it? to assume. But like, I, I'm high on the Rams. I think the Rams are going to be back this year. But but it's safe to assume the Bucks should be a double digit win team and should be a playoff team. Absolutely. Yes, that's true. They yeah, should be I think it's team. fair until proven otherwise. I think it's fair to put them number one. So she's got the Packers number two at 10.4 average wins. So it's obvious everything kind of gravitates toward like a middle ground here of like nine or ten wins yes. or seven wins. Uh, yes. And she says, you know, the elephant in the room is whether Rodgers will still be the Packers. She's assuming that Rodgers will be playing in Green Bay and they will win double digits. Niners at 10.3 as the third best team. I sort of like that one. Cardinals, yep. Washington, mm. Dallas, all at nine or above. I guess that's a ceiling. One of those two I could see up there. I don't think both of them should correct, be up there. Correct. Rams, Bears... Yep. This is just, I believe I'm just going to the NFC right now. Uh, Seahawks, Saints, yep. all like between eight and a half and wow. nine. You're a, long, you're a long ways down this list, Phil Mackey. And then Vikings at 8.4. Should Rodgers leave the Packers in the NFC North, this total would increase considerably. The Vikings are one team I have an eye on as a sleeper to overperform uh, offseason expectations. The schedule looks kind enough to Minnesota with no exceptionally difficult back-to-backs. Relatively favorable travel, although they do make like three West Coast trips. And then, yeah. And lack I disagree of a daunting, with that daunting matchup. So we could see this group reach the playoffs. So your thoughts on the Vikings being <laughs> if they sort don't, of buried here? A lot of people are fired, one, if, if they don't make the playoffs. Um, to me, it's low. It's low. Like, I expect more. If, if Rodgers goes back to the Packers, I expect more. If he doesn't, I expect a lot more. Mm-hmm. 8.4, right? 8.4 seems really low. I mean, you've got head, a head revamped roll, defense. Roll, if they win eight games, yes. people get fired. Roll. You've got a revamped defense. You have Cousins back. I mean, you know, let, this is not a this is a highly paid QB. You've got skill position guys and what should be an improved offensive line. 8.4 is 8.4 is very problematic for me. Yeah. So I don't know That's what low. I don't know what Cynthia's little projection computer says there, but eight and a half get you get you fired. So, all right, well, that's NFL.com's projections for the 2021 season. Mark from Mark. I am Mark from Mark. I am Kirk Cousins. I am a cyborg. <laughs> all right, boys. That's a wrap. That was good. A little right. deep dive there into what Kellen Mond can learn from I love the Kellen Mond talk. Cousins. Mm-hmm. I feel like also you guys out there, the audience, seem to love Kellen Mond talk too. Just judging by some of the most popular episodes of the last three weeks have like basically all been Kellen Mond episodes. So maybe we'll do it. So we do the Kirk Cousins state of Kirk Cousins during the season on Wednesdays. Maybe we have to do a state of Kellen Mond. I'd be up for it. We'll do a state of Kellen Mond. I'd do it. Fun. He's the Let's future. The rest of his Kellen career Mond. will be spent here in Minnesota. He announced at, that. Yep. At Ocean Air or Long John Silver's, depending on what he's craving for. Declan's so wrong on fast food, seafood, fast food. Good. So good. Hold my tongue. Give me yep. back the filet of fish. Give if you put enough breading on it, too, that everything tastes the same. See, that's uh, right. exactly what I need to hear. Yep, that's exactly what I need to know. <laughs> Write that down, predictions, and an accountability session tomorrow on Purple Daily. See you guys.